you sit down for those one two hours however long it takes for you to create a track you know you submit it um and then as long as it's getting used as long as it's playing you get paid for that so five to ten k is definitely attainable just creating music consistently on a consistent basis you know submitting to publishers who you know are consistently publishing doing what, what they're supposed to do um yeah your, your royalties they, they start to stack up how fast do you think someone can start sync and get to 100k in sync um you know it it's it depends you know i think depending on which lane you decide to go down it can be quicker for some and it could be slower for others right um because you have different you have different spaces so if you're kind of focused more so on the ad space right um where you know you could see um easily see a, a five figure upfront fee um just for a, an ad campaign for a brand um, for just one placement and, um, you know, a, the, and then still have the ability to, to relicense that same track multiple times. Um, so it could happen faster um, in that space. Whereas if, you know, you start off um, more so, you know, background instrumental cues on reality TV shows, it may take a while to kind of build up, you know, because a lot of that pay is going to be back end royalties unless you're doing like full songs and they're placing those songs then sometimes those come with upfront fees as well um so it just depends on, on which route you go but i always like to set realistic expectations for you know producers that that i'm working with and coaching and say hey like this is something this is a long play you know what i mean i the reason i got into it was um for the fact that you can kind of build up that residual revenue over time um through royalties just from your music airing over and over and over again um so you know it took me a, a solid you know five six years to see significant income every quarter from you know from music that's been playing on on tv shows and things like that and then you know, as I work more, um, you know, in this space, you know, the bigger paying opportunities, you know, started to come about. Um, so, you know, it really just depends on the individual and, and which route they decide to go. You, you actually got my mind going. There's so many things you touched on. Like one, you said significant income coming every quarter. You looked at it. It's, it's like a passive thing that you you build up. So what would you define as my significant income, at least like five, 10 K every quarter that, that comes in that you don't have to like work for at that point. Like at that point, you're literally, you, it's all working for you for real, for real. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, um, yeah, five, five to 10 K is definitely attainable. Just creating music consistently on a consistent basis, you know, submitting to publishers who, you know, are consistently publishing, doing what, what they're supposed to do. Um, yeah, your, your royalties, they, they start to stack up and, you know, you'll have a lot of your old tracks working for you on top of the new stuff that you're submitting. Um, so it just starts to pile, you know, just they it just starts to stack and snowball um, over time to where, you know, you your music is working for you. you sit down for those one, two hours, however long it takes for you to create a track. You know, you submit it. Um, and then as long as it's getting used, as long as it's playing, you get paid for that. So every time, you know, Love and Hip Hop re-airs an episode that had your music on it, you're going to get paid every single time, you know? So every time they have those marathons, you see a nice boost in the, in the royalties because they went through, you know, a, a whole season and then had the, you know, the, the, the recap shows that they have at the end of the season. So yeah, man, over time it adds up and, and that's not including, you know, the upfront fees that you can, you can see from stuff. And those can range from a few hundred dollars, um, sometimes nothing. It, re it really depends on the project, too. But, you know, typically, you know, if you're getting a song placed on a, a TV show or series, even on a streaming network, you can see anything from, you know, a few hundred dollars to um, I think averages up to up to about three, five thousand um, upfront sync fees. So those those tend to add up as well. Now, talking about these residuals. Like, cause obviously, especially something you want to put long term effort to, you want to get a sense of what that money looks like. We know streaming artists are always complaining, right, in terms of what that that check looks like. We're seeing actors and write, songwriters complaining about their residual checks specifically. Not we're not even talking about upfront. Um, let's just say for, I'm sure it varies. So maybe we need to talk about the different categories and things like that as well. But what 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 does a residual check look like for uh, a, a producer? 
Like, is it $20? I've been seeing, like, a lot of actors be like, man, I got $20 for this episode that re-aired or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, shoot, hey, on the streaming side, we're complaining, too, uh, because th that's been that's been the cause of a lot of issues, man. So I'll break it down for you. Um, so we have, you know, regular TV, like local TV. Um, you have network TV. Then you have, like, cable TV, right? So... When it comes to your music being aired and played on a TV show, all of those have different prices. So just a non-network channel, um, you know, something small, I don't know, um, not like a major network, right? So something like a, a UPN or like some random local channel, um, it's not going to pay as much, right? So you may see a few dollars in royalties per um, per performance or airing or whatever then you could go to an nbc or abc or cbs and that same placement could pay you um you know a few hundred dollars right and then you can go to the cable and then it's like in between the few dollars and you know a few hundred you could typically see you know anywhere from five cents to 20 something dollars per airing depending on the channel because then when you get in the cable now you got you know different networks and channels that pay differently so all of those different tiers are just different different fees um different royalties and then once you get to streaming it's it's pennies like it and it's well fractions of pennies so it takes a it takes a while to add up to the pennies um but the streaming pays the least out of all of the the different outlets um, so I think that's something that, you know, we, we still have to fight for as well, just to get them to increase that because, you know, just the, the whole model that's set up now, is just, it's archaic and it needs to be updated, um, to pay better for, for creators. But, you know, all those different things play a role into how much you get paid. Also, how long the, the track is used plays a role in how, how long it gets paid. Um, you know, a few seconds, you know, you can see, you know, not that much, but then once you pass kind of like this 45 second minute mark, then it, it you kind of get like this bonus, I guess, for the length of it being used. So the longer, longer it plays, um, the more they pay. So, you know, the goal is to, you know, hopefully they play something uh, for a longer period of time, but you're going to have a mixture of all types of stuff, some three, five second stuff, some 30 second stuff um you know some minute and a half once you get into sports then you're looking at longer you know longer placements there so it's all over the place man really really depends on the network time of day that plays a role um as well as how long they're using the track and the type of placement because if it's a vocal song versus an instrumental the vocal is going to pay more as well so so many different factors that play a role into how much you get paid yeah so is there like a I guess like a most coveted or a most sought after type of placement in sync. Cause I, I remember we, we had a, uh, another guest on that talked about like getting movie trailers is like really big on a lot of producers. Like you get the trailer, it's kind of like you, you've made it a little bit in that sense. But like, well, I guess what are those placements that are, that are a little bit more lucrative and probably more sought after because of that? Yeah. Um, feature placement. So that's a placement where, you know, say they take your song and there's no one talking over. It. It's just your song just playing um, to to picture. Um, so we call that like a feature use. So that pays more. Um, and then the next one up is um, honestly, man, I think a, a theme. You get a theme song like that's I think that's the, probably the most coveted thing, because, you know, as, as you know, from some of the classic shows, man, like that show can you know get syndicated and just air for decades um and you just continue to get paid you know uh depending on what what the agreement was but um i think that's probably one of the the most coveted um in, in the tv space is just landing the theme song then of course the trailers the trailers are dope which i feel like that's a whole lane in itself like just composing trailer music um is a skill um and then yeah those those feature placements Let's talk about the fact that most artists fail to understand that it doesn't take forever to monetize your audience. We had an artist literally begin to take off and make $20,000 from his brand new audience in the same month. But how is that possible? It's because we're in a new era, baby. 
Yes, you want to continue to build a relationship over time, but the first time you make money from your audience can happen today if you understand the new age music marketing funnel for artists. So if you want to hear about this approach and how you can apply it to yourself, I made a completely free video to watch at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You got to make sure you put the www or if you're on YouTube, you can find the link in the description and check out how we help monetize artists for completely free. I promise it'll completely change how you see things. The, the theme song seems to me out of those potentially the dopest, right? Yeah, Outside one. of, because one, like you say, you get the passive income for so long, right? If it works out to that point, right? Yeah. But on top of that, like the theme songs that are really like household name theme songs, after you get to that point, you kind of have some level of celebrity that you could begin to capitalize on yourself. You can start to market yourself as I'm the guy who wrote that song, right? Whether that's professionally or outside of the industry. So there's there's more social capital that you can pull from as well. Facts. Yeah, I agree. What about the that third one? You said, oh, trailers. So trailers being at the top and then the other one you call features. Can you describe that one one more time? Because I, I I think I see a common thread, but what do you mean by features again? Like feature feature use. So a feature use it, when we we talk about sync licensing, a lot of times we're we're talking about synchronizing music to pictures. So a lot of times our music is underneath dialogue. So it's a conversation happening between you know a couple of the actors or something like that, or. In a commercial, you know, there's somebody talking, doing the voiceover or over the commercial. Um, but, you know, when when you talk about music and it's only the music, all you hear is like the song. You can hear it clear. It's not like a like a source use where it's like coming from a car stereo or a radio in a restaurant. It's just like loud and clear as they're transitioning, maybe from one scene to the next. You know, you hear 30 seconds of this song and. You know, those are those are huge for a couple of reasons. So it's huge because it's a feature use feature use just pay more in royalties. Um, and, you know, if that song is just prominent and it's in the forefront and people rock with it, now they're pulling out their phones and they're shazamming it. So if you're an artist and you get like a feature placement on, you know, TV show, movie or whatever, now they're shazamming. Now your streams are going up. You know what I'm saying? Now you can also add that credibility to your brand as an artist. Like, yo, like, um, the, for example, uh, some friends of mine, uh, APX, um, they had uh, we had a, a track placed that they did on Napoli Ever After with Sinai Lathan, Nathan on uh, Lathan on Netflix. And, you know, they're able to say, hey, like this song was featured on Napoli Ever After. And they like they will forever be able to attach that to their brand as as an accomplishment so it's a win-win you know to to have a use like that even a background use because you can still you know add that to your your credits but yeah it's it's a win-win you can't really lose with uh you know getting your music feature like that wow what's up it's brand man sean and if you like this clip you can listen to the full episode on spotify apple or wherever you stream your podcast but if you want to keep watching we've placed a video that will be so useful for you conveniently above go ahead and click that link